थैंक यू जय शंकर जी as as was said by the external affairs minister under the guidance of honorable prime minister india's g20 presidency has worked for the theme one earth one family one future so today we are in a position to adopt through the finance track people centric action oriented and far sighted approach and as a result of which several outcomes of the finance track will certainly reflect uh, these objectives with which we started the negotiations it has been very clear in our mind that we should ensure that no one is left behind in our pursuit of global solutions so we have endeavored to support countries especially those from the global south to be an integral part of the global decision making process the g20 as you all know is a very diverse group each country is at different milestones of economic development and their trajectory is also very different in achieving their developmental goals so through well curated debates and careful assimilation of all the perspectives the indian presidency has crafted solutions that resonate with each member offering a shared path forward for all many action oriented outcomes of this presidency contain comprehensive strategies that cater to the unique needs and aspirations of all developing nations we assumed the presidency at a challenging time of geopolitical tension the indian presidency has worked to ensure that these divergences don't overshadow the core developmental outcomes or concerns of the global community that demand collaborative solutions so today as i look back at the 10 months of indian presidency i am left with gratitude and satisfaction i can confidently state that the indian g20 presidency has walked the talk now let me share with you just some of the key achievements of the indian presidency the finance track um, first one is the outcomes which are focused on strengthening the mdbs to address shared global challenges of the 21st century so under this strengthening mdbs there are four key highlights that i like to bring to your notice the first one is agreement on the need for a better bigger and more effective mdbs it is so necessary to have better bigger and more effective mdbs because the developmental demands from all across the globe is so high these institutions will have to be better and bigger this is also going to contribute to enhancing representation and voice of developing countries in the decision making the second under the mdb strengthening of mdbs is the g20 independent expert group on strengthening mdbs and this was established and it has submitted its volume 1 the first report their report consists of two volumes the first volume has already been sub, uh, submitted the report recommends a triple agenda that dovetails with a call for the bigger better and more effective mdbs the third point in strengthening mdbs is the agreement to collectively work towards boosting world bank's financing capacity here the options will be explored that will deliver a powerful boost to the ibrd headroom to support low income and middle income countries and the fourth endorsement for the g20 road map for implementation of the recommendations of an independent panel on capital adequacy framework of uh, the mdbs so the caf recommendations are focused on enabling mdbs to use the existing resources effectively the road map estimates this is going to be of interest for the media the road map estimates that implementation of the caf and the measures thereby will potentially yield 
additional lending headroom of approximately 200 billion US dollars over the next decade. So through these achievements, India has harnessed the opportunity provided by the G20 presidency to effectively articulate and embed the priorities of the global south in the larger global conversation on the MDB reforms. I move to the second, laying the building blocks for a globally coordinated and comprehensive policy and regulatory framework for crypto assets. The global push for clearer policies on crypto assets has gained momentum under the Indian presidency and a global consensus is emerging on the same. The presidency will support the IMF and the FSB in, and FSB is also setting the contours of the regulatory framework for a globally coordinated approach to crypto assets. So the presidency with the support of IMF and the FSB is setting these contours. The IMF and FSB synthesis paper about which I've spoken to the media earlier, including a roadmap. On that, I just want to give my observation. This synthesis paper delves into how the policy and regulatory frameworks developed by the IMF and the FSB alongside the other standard setting bodies will fit together and interact with each other. This paper is now available in the public domain for all of you all to see. The third one which I'd like to draw your attention to is the financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. India, as you all are aware, through the India stack, became the first country to develop all three foundational DPIs, the digital identity, the real-time fast payment, and a platform to safely share personal data without compromising privacy. So embedded this concept in the G20 financial inclusion agenda by formulating G20 policy recommendations for advancing financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. This recommendation, this set of recommendations cover five aspects, use of DPIs and accelerating financial inclusion, fostering well-designed DPIs, regulatory and supervisory aspects of DPI, institutional and governance arrangements by DPI, and ensuring customer protection. So DPI has also been integrated into the G20 Financial Inclusion Action Plan the FIAP, which will run between 2024 and 2026. That's a strong legacy of the Indian presidency. We also uh, assume the co-chair of the Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion, the implementation of the Financial Inclusion Action Plan, as well as the policy recommendations on DPI will remain as areas that will continue to be heard across the G20 Forum. So uh, the fourth one which I'd like to highlight is the debt resolution under the common framework and also beyond the common framework. Since its establishment in 2021, only Chad as a country uh, has had its debt restructured. The others have been waiting. So since India took over the G20 presidency, Good progress has been made in the ongoing country cases under the common framework of debt treatment and the three countries in that are Zambia, Ghana and Ethiopia. Succe We've also succeeded in using the G20 platform to also put in place a coordinated mechanism to address the debt situation of Sri Lanka, which is outside of the common framework. So G20 will continue discussing the policy-related issues linked to the implementation of the common framework and make periodically such appropriate recommendations. The launch of the Global Sovereign Debt Roundtable, which is co-chaired by IMF, 
the World Bank, and also the G20 presidency to enhance the conversation among the various stakeholders and address current shortcomings in the debt restructuring process. That has now become an institution which is actually act acting as a catalytic agent in getting resolutions done faster. The fifth point under the finance track which I'd like to bring, your note, uh, bring to your notice is the financing of cities of tomorrow. Key concerns of the low-income countries and emerging markets has always been to mobilize resources for financing sustainable, resilient and also inclusive cities of tomorrow. The G20 principles which are issued for financing cities of tomorrow to promote effective and efficient use of financial resources to support urban development that is socially inclusive, environmentally responsible and economically sustainable are now all under the framework of the principles which have been used. The MDBs and the development financial institutions can use these principles in their financing plans for urban infrastructure. The sixth, which I'd like to quickly draw your attention, is the two-pillar solution on global taxation, the international taxation. We've made substantial progress in the two-pillar solution, and uh, we've, uh, the work has also happened on the exchange of information on immovable property transactions between countries. There is a launch of the pilot program of the South Asia Academy in India for tax and financial crime investigation in collaboration with the OECD. The seventh on which I'll elaborate is mechanism to support the timely and adequate mobilization of resources for climate finance. Till date, the conversation was focused uh, on calling on developed countries to say where is that hundred dollar hundred billion US dollars which didn't come but Indian presidency adopted an action oriented approach and the G20 explored mechanisms that can support timely and adequate mobilization of resources for climate finance facilitating access to multilateral cl climate funds and enhancing their leverage and ability to mobilize private capital has also been our focus, special focus again on development, demonstration, deployment of green and low carbon technologies. Now the list of outcomes, I've pointed out seven, just three more which I'll not detail, go into the detail, but you can take it as enough has been done on that, I'll also put it out for your consideration. Scaling up sustainable finance for social sectors, health and education. Technical assistance for capacity building. Then global conversation on transition policies, especially to include range of options, both on pricing and non-pricing. And the third one, enhancing finance health collaboration so as to uh, cover many other work streams as well. So I listed out seven, elaborated on them, three others which have not elaborated, but on all of them, substantial program, uh, progress and outcomes have been achieved. Uh, India's uh, received tremendous support from the G20 members across the table. Uh, the outcomes of the Indian presidency are a testimony to India's commitment to multilateralism and for international cooperation. We are sure the upcoming Brazilian presidency of our strong support and to continue the momentum on key issues of global importance. I now hand over back to Minister Jay Shankar. Thank you, uh, Nirmala ji. Uh, may I now request G20 Sherpa Amitabh Kant to bring out the major outcomes from the Sherpa track. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, so first of all, when we started India's uh, presidency, the Prime Minister had said that India's presidency must be inclusive, it must be decisive, it must be ambitious, and it must be action-oriented. The New Delhi leader's declaration has 83 paras in all. All 83 paras 
have 100% consensus across all countries. There are eight paras on the geopolitical issue which is entitled Planet, People, Peace and Prosperity. All those eight paras have 100% acceptance. All countries have unanimously supported the New Delhi Leaders Declaration. This is one declaration without a single footnote and without any chair's summary. This is a complete statement with 100% unanimity. This demonstrates both the Prime Minister's and India's great ability to bring all developing countries, all emerging markets, all developed countries, China, Russia, everybody together on the same table and bring consensus. Secondly, this has been the most ambitious presidency in G20's history ever because the number of outcomes it has, the, both the outcomes and the annex documents are about 112, which is more than, more than two and a half times which has ever been achieved before. Thirdly, this presidency, if you go through the New Delhi leaders' declaration, it has a huge India narrative. It has a huge India footprint. Whether you look at the Deccan high-level principles on food security, whether you look at the Chennai high-level principles for blue ocean economy, whether you look at the Goa roadmap for tourism, whether you look at the Gandhi Nagar implementation roadmap for land restoration, or Jaipur call for enhanced MSMEs, all this are will leave a huge footprint of India in G20. So one of the, the key achievements to my mind, one is that we've achieved a very major green development pact in today's world of climate action and climate finance. Every single country has come together to focus on green development pact, which has financing, which has focused on global greenhouse gas emission by 43% by 2030, which has uh, a doubling provision of adaptive finance by 2025, which has a global biofuel alliance, which has a life, completely new principles of life for sustainable development, which has ending plastic pollution, which has reducing disaster risk, and a whole lot of other components put together as the Green Development Pact of the leaders of G20 countries for a greener world of tomorrow. Secondly, uh, there is a huge focus on accelerating progress on sustainable development goals because the COVID had hit a vast segment of our population. There's a G20 action plan to accelerate progress on SDGs. There is a huge a uh, focus on education, health, nutrition. Uh, there's a huge focus on uh, creative industries like culture as a transformation for SDGs. And there is a huge focus on inclusive and resilient growth in this entire things. Some of which, uh, most of which, which the finance minister has spoken about, so I'm not talking. But I think one of the biggest achievements of this uh, New Delhi Leaders Declaration is uh, what we've achieved on women-led development with a massive focus on women empowerment and gender equality. And this focuses on reducing labor force participation gap, bridging the gender digital divide. Uh, there's a huge focus on gender inclusive climate action. There's a completely big focus on women's food security, nut nutrition and well-being. And we've created a new working group on empowerment of women, which Brazil will carry forward. There's the next key big uh, focus has been on technological transformation and the digital public infrastructure. Before we started our presidency, uh, there was a vacuum on the digital world. There was no definition of digital public infrastructure. There was no framework. Both the definition and the framework has been accepted by G20 and for the first time there is a new financial architecture for digital public infrastructure. There is also a global digital public infrastructure repository. 
there's a huge uh, new focus for the first time in the world the G20 leaders are focused on artificial intelligence they are focused on cyber security uh, also I would say that one of the key aspects of this presidency has been its focus on developing and emerging markets no document of G20 has had such an immense focus on developing and emerging markets and the voice of the global south as this particular document has this is a document of the global south this is a document of the developing countries which came together and spelt out their priorities and in और हम उन्हें हर संभव सहायता पहुंचाने के लिए तैयार हैं योर हाइनेसेस एक्सलेंसीज जी ट्वेंटी के प्रेसिडेंट के तौर पर भारत आप सभी का हार्दिक स्वागत करता है 